Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, this talk would be about designing reactive apps in Kotlin. So my name is uh, Stepan Goncharov. I'm a senior software engineer in Grab. And uh, a little bit about myself. So I have uh, more than nine years of Android development experience and uh, also playing around with Kotlin since 2014. And it helped me to organize Kotlin user group in Singapore. And uh, yeah, I successfully used Kotlin production for the almost two years now. What this talk is about. So basically, we will design some components that based on reactive uh, library in Kotlin. And uh, we will see how Kotlin could help us to design a better APIs and uh, be more happy as a developer. And yeah, so solution that we'll discuss could be applied in uh, many languages. So this knowledge could help you in your day-to-day -day development, even if you are not using Kotlin. So the plan of this talk would be, I will talk a little bit about Kotlin for those who haven't heard about that. Then it would be a little bit about reactive extension. And then we will go through some typical problems and solutions. And uh, as a bonus, we will extend solution that we get to get more awesome features. So yeah, what is Kotlin? For those who haven't heard about that, it's a programming language from JetBrains. This is a language that officially supports by Google for Android development since last year. And uh, Kotlin is a language that could be compiled in uh, JVM bytecode and also JavaScript and the native platforms, such as uh, Swift or the native C binaries kind of stuff. This uh, language supports a lot of uh, modern programming languages concept, including functional programming. And uh, for the iOS developers, it looks a lot like Swift. So what is reactive extensions? It's the modern approach for asynchronous programming. In JavaScript, it calls uh, RxJS. In the Java world, it calls Arc Java, and uh, this approach is extremely popular in Android community. Yeah, and you could find implementation of reactive extension for almost every language. In this talk, we will provide a solution that we use for solving similar problems in uh, like many places of your applications. Yeah, that's the first problem. So why we're we using reactive extensions and asynchronous programming. We want to run some asynchronous computations in background and then they get a result. And uh, the bigger app gets, the more complex to handle all the different uh, like places from where we launch our jobs. So the first scenario that we want to solve right now, basically it's uh, the typical task that almost every developer has faced. Let's say we have a UI, we have a button there, and uh, we're doing some request to the backend. And uh, when it goes to testing, as many times as QA presses button, this many requests were sent. And uh, usually we need to handle this situation somehow. And this situation is usually handled differently in different places. On one screen, it could be disabling the button. In second screen, it could be just uh, like waiting 500 milliseconds between presses and check if requests still running and things like that. So what I want to do now, I want to avoid all this uh, like hacking around to solve like one particular group of problems. So how we could do it? So basically, Reactive extensions usually do not provide us any way of knowing if the jobs that we're launching is already running. So we need to solve this problem first. We need to know if our job is already in execution stage. So how we could know if job is already running? We will assign the ID to this job. And comparing jobs by ID, we would know if jobs are already running or not. Now, to do that, we will implement a simple interface. So this is a, a piece of Kotlin code. We will use this uh, interface called ACT that will represent our asynchronous computation. And this interface will have one property called ID. So yeah, in Kotlin, we could assign properties to interface, unlike Java, because Java interfaces could only have methods and no properties. Yeah. So, 
as you can see what we did we actually like split it our problem into like many simple pieces the first piece is identifying the jobs by IDs and uh, for this simple piece we introduce the simple interface so yeah this is what we will do through the stock we will split the problem into small pieces and then implement like very minimal simple solutions for this and now since we introduced the ID is it enough for us to prevent new jobs from being launched with same ID of course not ID is just an indicator so we need some component that will check these IDs for us and this component should know if jobs are already running or not so now what we need to do we need to design the component that will help us to handle this situation using the IDs that we introduced uh, and this abstraction will be called agent so the agent responsibilities would be checking if job is still in progress also agent will start an execution because what we want to achieve is if we have if we try to launch a duplicated job we want to like do nothing basically we want to prevent the additional resources from being wasted on this and also the agent since it would be launching these jobs it should handle the errors and be able to cancel current jobs and this is our interface so basically our requirements translated one-to-one -one into the functions of our interface so execute function will be accepting an act and also accepting the callback on error so in Kotlin we could use the default parameters as you can see inside an interface this uh, trouble to unit lambda the default parameter for that is uh, log error so basically we'll just print out the exception also we would have an option to cancel any running job by id and also cancel all the running jobs so we introduced quite a few interfaces and now let's see how we could implement it in a very simple way to use our act interface what we actually need for that is the real asynchronous job right and since we're using rx java here we would use completable and single like um, this completable act and single act classes it's basically an extension of completable holder and single holder rx java have a few more abstractions for handling asynchronous jobs but to simplify the code examples we'll use only these two so yeah basically what we need we implement this interface and the thing is since we're using reactive programming we use completable and single but we could extend the solution for almost anything if you want to use futures you could do that because the interface is still the same it's just an act that contains an id if you want to use promises you also could do that so it's not bounded on uh, any reactive framework and yeah finally an agent so what we will do inside an agent we'll just create the simple map that would contain id and in our case it would be disposable so disposable is just a link to our job that only allows us to cancel the job and check if uh, we already cancelled it and implementation is also pretty straightforward we will check if current map contains the key with id that we used to mark this job and if this id already present we do nothing and if it's not we launch the job in this way we prevent duplicated job from being launched and yeah and this is actually how we launch since we use Eric java for handling our synchronous jobs we will use uh, the simple Eric java apis in our case what we need to do is we need to subscribe subscribe for our asynchronous job to actually start it and later after we subscribe we put that is possible that produced by subscription in our map and as you can see we have the remove from map lambda that will be executed on uh, any result of this task if it would be 
executed with success, we'll remove it from map. Or if it will be executed with error, we'll also remove it from map. So yeah, the simple solution for the simple problem. And now we have a whole component that we could use in our entire app to deal with uh, duplicated jobs. Yeah. Also, one Kotlin fact. Basically, on previous slide, what we did, start execution method accepts uh, lambda as a second parameter. And in this case, once we use this function, we could use this special syntax. So basically, the first argument will be bounded by rounded braces, and uh, the second argument will be just uh, passed in curly braces. And this allows us to use more concise Kotlin syntax. So yeah, we implemented our interface, we implemented our component that will handle asynchronous jobs for us. Now, what we could use in Kotlin is as extension functions, actually to simplify creation of our acts. We will extend completable and single to create an act from that. And implementation would be pretty simple. And since the extension function you could use almost everywhere. This is a pretty good approach for getting the more useful APIs. Yeah. One more Kotlin fact. So the any class could be extended. Unlike Java, where we have, let's say, the string, which is final class, and we can't add any methods to it. So what we could do, we could create some static utility method pass the first argument a string in there, and then like do whatever we want with that. But in Kotlin, we actually could extend any class we want and add any amount of additional method we want. It will, of course, uh, compile in something like a Java static method, but from the developer point of view, it will be just a simple function that we could call on any object. So yeah, um, our implementation now allow us to prevent duplicating jobs from being executed. Here we have uh, the simple example. We create three completables, convert it to act. As ID, we pass the hello string. And now, once we try to execute, we have uh, printed these logs in console. So basically, the first time we pass completable to our agent, we start an execution. And second and third time, we just print the logs that this job actually duplicates, and we doing nothing with that. And then our first job is finished. So we achieved our first goal, preventing duplicated job from being launched. But now here comes the second problem. Sometimes what we need to do is we need to prevent second job from being executed. But in particular situations, let's say, we sending the update user profile requests. And for some reason, it takes long time. In this case, if we send this request the second time, probably we have already a different data in there, depending on like how long it takes to execute the first one. And in this case, our solution, solution will not work because we only cancel the second job that comes with same ID. And now we need to figure out how to cancel for example, the first job that we pass into the agent and start execution the second one, because the second one could be more actual than first one. To solve this, we introduced the strategies. Basically, the strategy is some metadata that allow us to understand how we should behave if the, we found that jobs is being duplicated. To do this, we will add one more interface, again, the simple one, and also the strategy class. Here, I'm using the sealed class, which is pretty similar to enum, but in Kotlin, sealed classes is more powerful because the enums have some restrictions that we can't uh, like overcome in Java, let's say, or in Kotlin, since it also supports the enums. We can't... Um, extend some class by enum. But when we use sealed class, we could do it. And here we use the object notation. It means that kill me and save me objects, it will be singletons. So we have the strategy and we have 
two singletons that represents the different strategies. And this object we will use in every act. So let's see how we could combine this together. Yeah, so sealed classes are cool. So in case you're using Kotlin, and if you thinking about what I should use the enums or sealed class, prefer the sealed classes because it's, it would be much easier to extend in future. So what we do now, we need to extend our solution. To extend it for our act interface, we just add a strategy holder. So basically interface that holds a strategy and could tell us like what we should do when duplicated jobs appears. And we also extend a little bit our completable act class. So basically we added strategy field in there and assigned the default value save me. Basically save me means that we need to close the second job that came and first job will continue execution. And kill me means we will kill the first job and start execution the second one. And again, this is our implementation of this behavior. Once we call execute method, we check if map contains the key. And if it contains, then we check the strategy. So for kill me, we will cancel the current execution, start a new one. And for save me, we just print the logs saying this is duplicated jobs. And yeah. If the map doesn't contain anything, we just start an execution the, the first time. And now let's see how our example get changed. Basically what we did comparing to previous example, we implemented our strategies and now all these completables are implementing kill me strategy. It means that the last one wins. And in logs we could see that we started and canceled first two completables that you're trying to execute and the third one will be finally executed because because now with skill me strategy it has higher priority okay so what we achieved so far basically we created a component that allow us to handle duplicated jobs and we implemented the strategies that allow us to control how these duplicated jobs will be handled but this is not all the problems. Sometimes there is a, a bit more difficult problems to solve for us in many projects. One of the very common scenario is a like-dislike behavior. Let's say we're building some social network app and we have a lot of these um, like feeds with some posts that we could like. And what's like the straightforward solution? Previously, like when mobile development was just started, when you press like, the UI was just blocked. And until the execution finished, you could, can't do anything. Like, of course, the user experience in this case is uh, pretty bad. So right now, if you press like button, it immediately animates and you see the result of your action. But of course, on a server, it's uh, not true. We still need to execute this request and get the result from server to make sure. And since we are all like pretty advanced developers and we want to deliver the best, best experience to user, now we have a problem because um, user or QA, they could just click this button like as many times as they want. And now we need to handle this behavior correctly. And the thing is, of course, in uh, like the general case, these two requests would have different IDs because we still need to understand that it's different requests. We can't treat it as, as equal. And that's why in uh, our solution we introduce groups and group strategies. Of course, this uh, like-dislike example, it's also like pretty simple comparing to the real examples that we could have in real projects. Let's say we have some like document, we could create it modify, rename, and uh, do a lot of different things with that. And these actions, we could also unite in a group. Here, we will just introduce uh, two default strategies to make things a bit simpler. But for real scenarios, we could have a lot more group strategies that would handle more 
complex cases. So yeah, the same thing that we did for the strategies for particular jobs, we introduced the single interface with the group strategy field. And group strategies will be also represented by sealed classes. The default group strategy, in which we will do nothing, and the kill group strategy. It means that when we trigger in the like request, and it's still in progress, and then we trigger in dislike request, the dislike request will kill the whole group. Yeah. What we also need to do, and unfortunately, looks like I forget to add it in a slide, we need the group name, because group strategy is not enough. So we need to know exactly what group is there. Yeah. And now, to handle the groups, we finally need to modify our actor. The way we do it is we, instead of having the hash map with IDs and uh, jobs in there, we will create hash map of hash map. So the first hash map will contain the group key and hash map with all the group requests that currently executed. So yeah, in Kotlin we have a pretty cool feature called type alias that allow us to be a bit more explicit. In case I will put the whole signature of group map field, it could take like two times more than this slide width. But now using the type alias, I could name my classes with generics in a way that it could fit the slides. So yeah, type alias feature is pretty cool, especially if you're doing the presentations. So yeah, and logic, it's uh, a bit more complex of course, but not much. So basically what we would do, the first thing, if we start execution of a new job and group with, uh, yeah, and hash map for group for these jobs is not yet in our map, we just create it. Like concurrent hash map, um, act key disposable. And then we put this hash map in our groups map. And then we do the same thing that we did previously. Ac except for checking for group strategy. So if our group strategy is kill group, we just get all this map with all the jobs in this group and kill them. Yeah, why not? So yeah, use type aliases. And let's take a look at our uh, final example. This is how our creation of acts looks like. We extend our to act extension function to accept ID group strategy and the group key. So basically in our case, our group key would be name of our group, which is likes, dislikes, and the post ID. We could create any ID we want, it's just uh, need to be same for the group. So yeah, anything you like, as long as you could understand, understand from this name what it does, is good. And now, we try to execute the same example, but now what we're doing is we mark ID as act for first one, for second one would be dislike, uh, ID as like for first one, second one as dislike, and third one like again. So and in this case, what we will see in logs, so we start liking, then we start disliking, and start liking again. And first two jobs are being cancelled, and only third one gets finished. So now looks like we achieved our goal. We handle pretty complex behaviors with pretty simple implementation. And the good thing about this solution that's now it could be extended. Yeah. So if you notice in the previous example, I finally start to use naming arg named arguments. In Kotlin is pretty handy too. And uh, during the code review, it allow you to understand better like what you're trying to do, especially if you have a lot of arguments which are booleans, and let's say you have five of them. So the named arguments, the only way you could understand what you're doing. Basically, 
like the one most like to really understand one more goal of uh, this additional components that will bring us. Previously, all things that now handled by actor was in implemented in one way or another in view models and presenters, at least in projects that I've been working on. So starting jobs was inside view models or presenters, management of subscriptions. Also, there was a lot of duplicated code because in every place, this kind of behaviors was handled differently. Also, view model in presenter should handle lifecycle event. And a bit later, we'll see how we could extend our solution to handle lifecycle. Also, the group management also being done like randomly in random places on demand. Logic ex execution strategies and also the view state. But the view model and presenter should, shouldn't handle all these things. And now, once we introduce the agent, view model, it's slimmer now, much slimmer. It only handles and acts and passing data to the agent. And agent taking care of all other things, including strategies, group strategies, subscription, man subscription management, and life cycle. OK. And now, let's see how we could extend the solution. Because since we have the single place which launching our jobs, we could add more advanced logic to allow some very advanced technique and really boost our productivity as a developer. First, life cycle. So previously, let's say in Android development, life cycle is a big problem. We have a lot of different states. And to prevent the memory leaks, we need some universal way to canceling the jobs that are currently running when we move from one screen to another. And this could be handled, handled by agent now. Also, the persistency. Since our acts now is a single interface with only the few fields, you could put your logic in separate classes. And after you do that, you finally get an opportunity to persist this data. Because previously, let's say Arrow Java, it doesn't support any persistency. And once you launch the job, there is no way for you to somehow save it and then restore. In one of the projects I worked on, it was a pretty big problem because we had a lot of online capabilities. And once we go in online, we need to synchronize all this offline data with our servers. And the things get even worse when user could restart your app because we can't control on which stage it would happen. So in this case, we needed some solution for this. And this solution could be easily applied to our solution that we discussed. Also the plugins. Once you have a single place to launch all your, all your jobs, you could add additional logic in there. Let's say you need advanced logging, right? So you want to know how many jobs is currently running. You could add it there. Like previously, there was no option for this because all the jobs was launched from many different places. And yeah, it's just pretty hard to understand what's going on. How we could handle life cycle. So basically, it's pretty easy. Once we have our agent implementation, when we receive on destroy event, we'll just cancel all the jobs and that's it. Only thing we need to do is implement this lifecycle interface, which is uh, depending on what you're using and what platform you're working on. Should be pretty simple. The plugins, as I said, we could add the list of plugins, dynamically add and remove it. And before every execution, we just insert some particular logic that you want to apply. Persistency. Yeah, it's a bit tricky, but it's still uh, much simpler now. So you just create your class that you could persist, and that's it. Provide some mechanism to getting data from database and instantiating this class, and then passing it to our agent. And also metrics. Again, we have a single place to launch our jobs. And now, at any moment of time, we could go into debugger and see how many jobs are actually running right now. So how you will do it without this kind of components. And also, we could capture the metrics in a single place. Again, if you want to use some custom approach or implement some plugin solution for that, 
you're good to go. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the talk. And uh, yeah, so in Grab we are hiring. And uh, if you want to know more about working in Grab, please reach me out after this talk. So any questions? Yeah. So you, your engine for the implementation of that thing that you throw to me, how would you need to support that like, in this set up? This is, uh, yeah, this is not completely trade safe. Of course, in real project, you will do like more threat safety checks. Actually, I have this uh, sample app, not an app, it's just a source code for this talk on a GitHub. And in source code, I actually handled thread safety. So this is synchronized blocks and also concurrent hash map. I removed all this code from the slides to make it easier to understand. So if you want to like some more thread safe approach, you could uh, check out the source code. Any more questions? Okay, thank you so much for joining. Hope you enjoyed the talk. <laughs>